in this English lesson. I wanted to help you learn the English term elbow grease. Now this is your elbow and grease is a lubricant that you put on machinery so that when metal moves against metal it's nice and slippery. But elbow grease, the term elbow grease, simply means hard work that you do by hand. Maybe you've bought an old car and it's a little bit rusty and you want to kind of sand all the rust out with sandpaper and paint it. You could say, oh, it just needs a little bit of elbow grease. Uh, maybe you've bought something that needs to be fixed up. Maybe you bought an old machine from someone and it just needs a new belt or a new pulley or a little bit of electrical work. You could say it just needs a little bit of elbow grease and it will be working again. So again, there's no such thing as grease that you put on your elbows. It's simply a term that means to work hard on something, usually with your hands. The other term I wanted to teach you today is the term elbow room. So elbow room is simply the amount of room that you have around you. We almost always use this in the negative. We say things like, oh, I was on an airplane the other day and it was really squishy. There wasn't very much elbow room. Or I went to the mall to do some shopping and there were so many people there. There, was not, there wasn't hardly any elbow room. So elbow room is si simply the room that you have around you. I guess because you can't move your elbows, you don't have a lot of elbow room. So to review, elbow grease is simply hard work. Um, if you just work hard on some things, you can get them working again, or they can just do better than what they're doing before with just a little bit of elbow grease. We even use this for cleaning. If your dishes are really dirty, with a little bit of elbow grease, you can get them clean again with a little bit of hard physical labor. And elbow room is simply the amount of room you have around you, usually used in the negative. If you wonder why it seems like I'm speaking fast, it started raining for some reason. So I will try to slow down. Hey, let's look at a comment from a previous video. Is that too slow? This comment is from Andre Padron, and the comment is, thank you, Mr. Bob. I like the introduction. That's upside down, isn't it? Yeah, uh, in the previous lesson, I had my little paper upside down. I was wondering, what happens at the farm when the winter arrives? Does the winter stop the growing of all kinds of flowers and wheat, or is there still something that the farm can produce in the heavy Canadian winter? And my response is, winter is a time to relax, and watch the snow fly on the farm. It is a nice change of pace. So yes, yes or no, I don't know how to say this. Um, no, we do not grow anything on the farm in the summer. I guess I could say, no, I'll stick with no. No, we don't grow anything on the farm in the summer. Uh, in the summer, in the winter. Now I'm speaking so quickly, I'm not even answering the question properly. No. We don't grow anything on the farm in the winter. The winter is definitely a time where we take a little bit uh, of time to relax. Now, I still go to work. I still teach every day. I still make YouTube videos, but definitely winter is a time where the farm is at rest and Jen gets to rest a little bit as well. Jen actually puts in really long hours right now. The month of August and the month of September are very, very busy months on the flower farm. I should have done this video out in the flower field, but I think you've seen enough of it. Um, she's very busy, so she looks forward to about the middle of October, end of October, when she can relax a little bit uh, and just kind of watch the snow fly outside as winter begins. It makes it a little challenging for me though to make YouTube videos in the winter. There are days where it's simply too windy, simply too snowy. Um, sometimes there's a blizzard and it's just really hard to get outside and I actually, every once in a while wonder why I do that, why I make videos outside, and then I see everyone's comments about how much they like it, and uh, I do like going outside too. Anyways, thanks for watching this little English lesson. I'll see you in a couple days with another one. Bye.